Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jeremy Snodgrass, youth pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. This morning, uh, bringing the word to you and just excited. I, I always love bringing the word of God. And uh, it's always nerve-wracking. You're always nervous. I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever got up and preached ever in my life without being nervous and just uh, before I got up here because the word of God is important. Amen. I said the word of God is important. And I know I've had moments in my life where whether it be on a Sunday or whether it be on a Wednesday or just reading God's word where the word of God has changed my life in that moment. Come on, how many have ever had those moments where you can look back and sometimes that becomes your favorite scripture of your entire life because that you read that at that moment at that time and the word of God changed your life. And I believe that every time we open God's word, every time the word of God is presented on a Sunday, Wednesday, that it can change your life. And I believe that with all of my heart. And uh, this morning, before I get started, just uh, uh, want to uh, announce uh, next uh, Sunday is our uh, Kid Zone Back to School Bash, and we're going to have a good time. We're going to be out in the field, and we're going to be playing games and, and different things. And so if you have a student um, or know of a student that's going to be here for uh, the Kid Zone Back to School Bash next week, tell them to bring, or if you could help, to bring some extra clothes, because they're probably going to get wet, uh, maybe a little bit dirty. How many know that's okay with kids? And so next Sunday would not be a good Sunday for them to wear a suit and tie to Kid Zone. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so, so make sure they dress down a little bit and then maybe bring them some extra clothes uh, for uh, the day and for the event. We'd appreciate that. Amen. This morning I want to speak to you on building the temple. And uh, we're going to be in Ezra. And uh, we're going to start off in Ezra chapter 1, verses uh, 1 through 4. And you can follow along um, also on your phone. Uh, on the YouVersion app, and is that right? The U-ver- yeah, I said it right. All right. And, uh, and you can follow along as uh, we're going this morning on there. But in Ezra chapter 1, and we're going to start off with uh, verses 1 through 4 in a little bit. In just a second, we'll be in Ezra chapter 4. And uh, so Ezra chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And then we're going to see, uh, as you look at the, the book of Ezra, you're going to see a, it's a journey that uh, we're witnessing. It's a journey that we're seeing as the children of Israel uh, who had been conquered by Babylon and they've been taken from their home. And now we see a new, a new era coming as Persia has defeated uh, Babylon. And Persia has basically conquered the world kind of like uh, Babylon did at that time. And so now we, we're seeing a new season. Uh, like I said, the children of Israel were, were taken uh, from their home, and we're, we're held captive. And then here we are in the first year of Sirius, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Sirius, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and also put it in writing. This is what Sirius, king of Persia, says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judea. In Judah, sorry. Any any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem in Judah and build the temple of the Lord. And God of Israel, and the God of Israel, the God who is in Jerusalem, and may their God be with them. And in, just listen to this in verse 4. This is just incredible. And in any locality where survivors may now be living, the people are to provide them with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with a free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem. So let's look at that. Let's just look at this. So, So here they are. They're, they're starting off with this journey. I mean, they've been, uh, they've been captive in a, in a foreign land. And then now, the, how, and, and this is just amazing. The book of, of Ezra is amazing. How many know that God can, even, can use anybody he wants to fulfill his plan and his vision? Come on. Any 
anybody he wants. He can use them to fulfill his vision. And he moved upon the heart of the king. And all of a sudden, you see this new journey begin to start. As they, he, he, he proclaims and he says, listen, we're going to send you back. We're going to send you back for, uh, and you're going to go and you're going to rebuild the temple of the Lord that has been destroyed. And not only are we going to do that, but we're going to provide for you. And as you read through that, they, they, provi- they provided, they, they took all of the, uh, the temple gold, the, the bowls, the instruments that they used for sacrifice that had been stored in the temple of the gods um, in the Babylon, Babylonian Empire. And they took all of that out and they sent it with them. But we're going to give you gold. We're going to give you silver. We're going to give you livestock and animals for your sacrifices. And then all the people around, uh, that they're going to give you a free will offering. Free will offering, those are fun, aren't they? And, and think about that. Oh, my goodness. I mean, just think about it. Hey, listen, um, that, that's good news. Come on. How many here would be excited if we're saying, we're going to send you on your journey, and we're going to provide everything you need? The gold, the silver, you name it, it's all yours. It's all yours. And then they even go in later on because they knew that they give them, they get, they're going to give them more than what they need. And they even said, and he said, and whatever's extra, whatever's left, you decide. You can decide what you, it needs to be spent and how it needs to be spent. And, and you see this, and it's like, oh, my goodness, that is so incredible. That is so awesome. God is good, amen. Amen. God is good. And it kind of reminds me, and it takes me back to that moment and that time when I first gave my heart to the Lord. And the feeling of just like, man, I just received forgiveness. I just received mercy. And I just received a heavenly father who has all the riches in the world, who controls everything. And, and I, just, I just came into that. And I remember that feeling of being so excited knowing that I had given my heart to the Lord, know that my life was changed, knowing what God had done for me, and knowing that I was connected with the higher power and a source that was unlimited. How many know that that's a good feeling? That's a good feeling. That is a really good feeling. So this is what the, the children of Israel, this is, this is what they were, were going. Everything looked great. Everything was laid out before them. Everything was great. And how many know that we have moments like that, we have times like that, but how many know that that's not real life to live that way? <laughs> come on. I, I say, come on. How many know that that's not real life? Okay? We come in here on Sundays and the, and the power of God is here and we, we, we meet with God every Sunday and we're gathered together with all of the brothers and sisters of this church and we're together worshiping him, and we're, 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 just, we're just going after God. How many know that, listen, that's not everyday real life? Come on. I said that, that yeah, I mean, it's a blessing, and I thank God that we can come and do this. But how many know we got to work sometime? Come on. How many know we got to pay the bills? Come on. How many know we got to raise the kids? We got to, come on. How many know? How many know? We got to deal. How many know we got to mow the lawn? Come on. You know, you know what I'm saying? Listen, that's real life. And so we see this journey that they're taking, and then you go to Ezra chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, and I'm just going to hit a part of this. And, and I would encourage you, man, read the book of Ezra. It's just so incredible, the, the journey and everything that God uh, took them through. And in Ezra chapter 4, verses 4 through 5, let, let's look what happens as they begin to lay the foundations, and here's the journey. They're laying the foundations uh, of the temple, and next thing you know, it's not making some people very happy. It's not making people very happy, uh, their neighbors, the people around them, that they're beginning to build the temple of the Lord again. And in verse 4 and 5, it says in Ezra chapter 4, it says, Then the peoples around them set out to discourage the people of Judah and make them a Afraid to go on building. They bribed officials to work against them and frustrate their plans during the entire reign of Sirius, 
king of Persia, and down to the reign of Darius, king of Persia. And so through the reign, and, and, and that would have been, that would have been uh, one, two, three, four, that would have been up until four reigns of the king of Persia that they set up plans and they worked against them the entire time, the entire time to frustrate their plans. How many know real life starts? Come on. How many know that real life starts? And we have this plan and we have this, just like the children of Israel, they had this plan to go. They had all the resource. Listen, they had all the resource that they needed to build the temple of God. How many know that we personally have all the resource we need to build our life in Jesus Christ? How many know that we have everything we need to build our lives in Christ. We have everything, just like they did. They had everything. There was nothing that they did not have in order to complete the building in the temple of the Lord. But yet you'd see it uh, years and years and years. Um, it went and went and went as things, real life happened. Their neighbors got mad. The enemies didn't want them to build their temple. They didn't want to see it happen. And so we see this we see this story in Ezra and we see this happening. Well, I want, I want to try to parallel this because I, I want to I parallel what we see in the book of Ezra in the building of the temple. How many know today that we are the temple? How many know today that we are the carriers of the presence of the Lord? We don't need a temple anymore where God's presence sits and then we go. We, no, Jesus changed all that. We are the temple. We are the carriers of the presence of God in this world. That's who we are. We are the ones. That is our responsibility. And just like they were building the temple of the Lord in the book of Ezra, we today are called to build our temple in Christ. We today are called to, to, to give our lives to Jesus, to pour, to pour out to him, to give to him. To allow God, just like this last song that we just sang, as you, if you listen to the words, it's like, Holy Spirit, guide me, lead me. Lead, help, help me to love like you love, to act like you love, or to act like you do. And, and this is what we're called to do as the temple of the Lord, and that's, that's who we are. And there's times where we, where we have in our walk with God that it's just like, it seems like, we can't lose. Come on. You know what I'm saying? We have those times, just like they did in chapter 1. We have those times and those moments. But then real life starts. How many know we've got an enemy? We've got, uh, we've got things around us that are trying to stop us. But listen, I want you guys to remember, and I just want to, to just, I want you guys to listen. I want you guys to really know that the bottom line is, no matter what happens, no matter what we go through, we are called to constantly build our temple. We are called to constantly get closer to Jesus. I know pastor a few weeks ago when he was preaching um, was talking about the, the fruit of the spirit and stuff. And, and, and he's saying, listen, if, if you get saved and there's no, and, and you're still struggling with the same things 20 years from now and there's no change in your life, then something's wrong. And pastor was talking about that. We are called to build. We are called to get closer to Jesus. And we've got to remember some things. There's things that when we're building our temple, when we're in this walk, there's things that we have to remember. We have to remember that when real life starts, God does not disappear. Listen, when real life starts, God does not disappear. Just like, listen, I, I, and you, they had everything. They had everything. And then all of a sudden, they start building their temple, and the enemies around them, the neighbors around them, they do everything they can to frustrate, to, to cause fear, to do everything they can to stop them, to stop them from growing. How many know that when real life starts, God is not gone? Sometimes we're like, oh, man, what happened, God? Man, just... Just a month ago, this and this and this. Man, everything was great. Now I've lost this, 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 and this. God, where are you? How many have said that? God, where are you? What's going on here? I don't understand. 
But God never leaves you. He never forsakes you. God does not disappear. But it's in those times, it's in those times when real life starts that we've got to remember a very, very important principle because a lot of times, a lot of times when we feel like God isn't there, we've got to know beyond a shadow of doubt that he is. And that is an opportunity for us to grow in our walk with God, to build. Because if we're going to build our temple in Christ, there has to come a place and a time in our life where we place faith over feelings. If we're going to build our temple, listen, if we're going to grow in Jesus Christ, there has to be a time that we put faith over our feelings. You know, the, the preacher, the preacher that was at camp this year, and I loved his honesty. And he said, you know, he said, I've come up on Sundays before, and I preached the word of God, and I and never felt God that day. He said, I, I never felt, I never felt goosebumps. I never felt this. But he said, it was okay, because I knew that he was there. I knew that he had anointed me to preach the good news. Even though my feelings weren't feeling that day. <laughs> come on. I put faith over my feelings. And if we're going to build our temple, we have to do that. We have to say, God, I know when when everything was good a second ago or a month ago or a year ago, man, oh, I, I had no problem knowing that God was there. But when things are bad, that's when we hold on and say, hey, I have no doubt. Whether I feel them or not or whether it's good or bad, I know that my God is here. No matter what comes against me. And if we're going to build our temple, we have to cross over. I believe with all of my heart, many people who walk away from their relationship with God never get past this point right here. They never put faith before their feelings. They have a wrong interpretation. And they're thinking, well, I I gave my heart to the Lord, but now all this bad stuff happened. This doesn't feel good. This isn't for me. And they walk away. I believe in many people that their building of their life in Jesus Christ stop because they can never put faith over their feelings. We have to live by faith and not by sight. That is so true in this world. Come on. That is so true in this world. We have to live that way. Second thing is this, the enemy does not want you to grow, just like all the enemies around them. Listen, they bribed, they paid people to frustrate and to stop the plans of the building of of the temple. How many know that the enemy does everything he can to stop us from growing? Listen, he fears a God-filled temple. The enemy fears a child of God who allows their life to be the temple of God and the presence of God to reign in them. He fears that. And he does everything he can to stop it. Just like the enemies in the book of Ezra were trying to stop it because they knew how powerful the children of Israel were in the past when they served God. He knew that they knew that nobody could stand against them. That their enemies were literally wiped away before the presence of the Lord. They knew that the enemy feared. Well, Satan knows that if we allow God to build us, his presence to live in our life, for us to grow in him and grow in him, that he is scared to death because he knows that he cannot stand against us when Christ has filled our temple. Listen, he will do everything he can, everything he can to stop everything he can
Listen, how many know that when we're on our journey, the enemy's going to do everything he can to stop us, confuse us, get us distracted? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. When we're walking, he's going to do everything he can to distract us. Now, how many thought that I really took that phone call? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I might be in pastor's office if I actually did that for real. So, listen, he will do everything he can to stop us, to distract us from what, just like I was supposed to be preaching the word of God, and I took a phone call instead. Listen, how many times we take options that seem a little bit better than to us, a little bit easier sometimes, rather than putting our hands to the plow and building our life in Jesus Christ. Sometimes we settle. Sometimes we relax. We walk away a little bit. We take a break from building our temple. Listen, that's what the enemy wants to do. He's going to frustrate your plans and your building. But God has called us to be the temple of the Lord. We have to respond to life. Listen, if we mess up, we've got to get up. I said if we mess up, we have to get up. Let me say that again. If we mess up, we have to get up. Listen, you see, as you read the book of Ezra, and and Ezra was coming, the the temple was was built, and Ezra was coming to the temple. And then you see, as Ezra got some news, and they're like, hey, uh, Ezra, we just want you to know that the people of the Lord, they are now beginning to intermarry with the pagans and those who worship other gods around which specifically God told him not to do. And you see Ezra, and he tears his clothes. He goes down to his knees, and he stays in that place until the evening sacrifice. And then he goes, and he stands before the Lord. And the very first thing he says is, God, I'm ashamed to even stand before you at this point. How many has ever been at a point where you mess up, and you don't even want to go into the presence of the Lord? How many you've been ashamed, and you don't even want to go there. I, man, I don't, I don't even want to go there. The enemy will try to use that shame to keep you from getting up. The enemy will try to use that shame to stop you in your relationship with Jesus. To stop you from building your temple. He'll do everything he can. Everything he can. If you mess up, you need to get up. Listen, don't let your wounds of life get infected. Don't let your wounds of life get infected. How many know that if you're to cut yourself and you don't take care of it, you don't clean it out, you don't wash it, you just get dirt and everything in it, how many know that's probably going to get infected? And then literally, listen, literally just a small little injury or a small little cut if it, goes, if it goes untreated and gets infected, can literally take your life. Can literally take your life, small, tiny. It can take your life in the end if you allow it to get infected, if you allow it to begin to put poison into your bloodstream. Listen, don't let the wounds of life, listen, you'll see as they wrote letters to the different kings of Persia, telling them, hey, the children of Israel, they're this. They're, they're, they're full of rebellion. They're this. you got to be worried about them. And accusations, this. And tell this and this. How many have ever been hurt before? How many, how many has ever been uh, lied about before? And, and somebody said you did this and you didn't do it. We've been all been hurt. We've always been uh, uh, at that point. Every single one of us, we've had those injuries. We've had those wounds come into our life. But listen, if we allow those wounds to stay and those hurts to stay in our heart and not give them to God and not release them to God, then they will become poison to our bloodstream. They will become poison to our life. And you will not be able to build your temple in Christ if there is poison in your bloodstream. Even if you were completely innocent and you did nothing wrong, if you hold on to those hurts and those pains and unforgiveness, they will become poison to you, and they will destroy your temple in Christ. They'll destroy it. Don't let fear paralyze you. Don't let fear paralyze you. You said that they tried to scare them from building the temple. We don't know exactly everything they did, 
and how they intimidated them, but they did. It said that they tried to, they tried to scare them. They tried to put fear in them to keep them, to keep them from building their temple. You know, one time, I know this youth pastor who like 19, 18, 19 years ago, it might have been me, that, that, uh, that one night, it was an all-night youth event, and the buildings were separate. The church was over here, and the, the other facility was over here, the gymnasium and different things. And during the middle of the night, like 1 or 2 in the morning, um, I had set up this thing. And, yes, 19 years ago, they had video technology, just so let, if any young people are here. And, and so I had uh, – the church had this camera. You know, you can record on it and stuff, just a little, a little handheld camera. Of course, it was probably like that big uh, back then. But – and what I did is one at a time I would – come to, to my leaders, and I would say, hey, listen, um, we're out of Sprite, and, I, and there is some Sprite over in the other building, in the kitchen over in the other building. Here's the key. Could you go? And so I'd send them over there one at a time. This was 2 in the morning by themselves, and church completely dark. In the room they had to go to, there was a stairs that kind of there, and they had to go to the room. Well, they had to turn that light on in their way. Um, when they were coming back, um, all the lights would be off, and this would be the last light. They would have to go and reach around the corner, and that's exactly where the stairs were to turn that li- last light off before they left the building. And so I set up where somebody had a camera and then another guy with an alien mask. And, and so they thought they were all alone. And I sent these, some of these guys, some of my youth leaders, man, they had arms like, you know, I mean, just huge and everything, and sent them over to grab a bottle of Sprite, which I had on the counter over there. And... Then we recorded it, and what we did is at the end of the night, the last thing we did before everybody went home is we watched that video, and it was hilarious. I mean, these big macho guys were just, I mean, they would turn that corner to shut the, and then there was a guy standing there in an alien mask, and they were literally just, I, I can't, I mean, they were just shaking like this, but the best one, the best one is one of the guy leaders did it, screamed like a girl, and fell on the ground and literally went into a fetal position. That's funny. And, and so listen, that's funny. But listen, how many know, how many know that when the enemy bring, brings fear, we've got to fight back. We had one leader out of all of them that the very first reaction he had was attack. And that was funny too. <laughs> because of lawsuits, I can't tell you everything that happened there. But, uh, but anyway, but anyway, and it's so, but listen, when the enemy brings fear, we've got to remind them who we are. We've got to remind the enemy. We've got to tell them, this is who we are in Christ. You will not stop me. You will not stop me. I will build my temple. That's what God has called us to do. Not to be like Chad Brown, who screamed like a girl, fell on the ground, and went into a fetal position. (laughs) That's not what God calls us to do. He calls us to fight. To fight. Don't let fear stop you. Listen, last thing this morning. You got to find your purpose in Christ. You've got to find your purpose in Christ. God has a plan for you. Every single one of you. We know, we know God's plan is for us to be carriers of the presence of the Lord. God has called us to carry, to open our mouths, to tell, to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ into this world. That is everybody's purpose in this place. Everybody's purpose in this place is God saves you and builds you for you to go out and to carry his presence into the world of lost people. Every one of us, that is our responsibility as a Christian. And that's why the enemy wants to stop you from building your temple. He wants to confuse you that you don't have enough knowledge uh, of the word of God to, to tell somebody about Jesus. All you need, all you need to tell somebody about Jesus is your testimony of what Christ did in you. Listen, Christ saved me. I had sin in my life, and I came, and but the blood of Jesus, because uh, Jesus was on the cross, and I'm saved. 
And I just said that just like that because I've had students tell me testimony when they're cheering the Christ and they're just like, boom, 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 boom. But how many know that's okay? You just got to know what Christ did in you. You don't have to have a doctorate in theology. Come on, to share Jesus. Because it's not your knowledge that's going to bring them to the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit working through you as you begin to tell them about the blood of Jesus and what Christ did in you. That's what's going to bring them to Jesus, not your vast knowledge of the Word of God. Every single one of us, that is our purpose. That is our goal. That is why we are here. God has called us to build our temple. And he wants to use us. Use us to bring the message of Jesus Christ into this world. Sometimes I think, sometimes I think, God, what would we really look like if we were true carriers of the presence of God? If we truly fulfilled the purpose that you have called us to. And I want you to know, at this moment in time, whether you just got saved, whether you're 10 years old, whether you're 100 years old, God has a purpose for you. Whether you've been saved for 40 years, God has a purpose for you. And that he still wants to shine his light through you to this world. God still has a purpose for your life. Build your temple as unto the Lord. Because God needs us to build our temple to where we can fulfill our purpose. Just like the temple that they were building had a purpose to, to hold the presence of God, to, to bring sacrifices for the sins of the nation. Jesus Christ saved us with the purpose to build, to go out, and to share Jesus. To go build that temple. We need to be that temple of the Lord in this world today. We need to be that light. We need to be that presence. If you bow your heads, close your eyes this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning, just want to pray over you. I believe in this place we're probably all in different walks of life, different circumstances. And right now, you might be in the Ezra chapter 1 where everything is going right. All your needs are met, and there's surplus all around you. You might be in a time right now to where it's not like that. It seems like nothing's going right. It seems like one battle after another, after another, after another, after another. But today, I want you to know, no matter where you're at, no matter what season you're in, that God wants to use you in the good times, that God wants to use you in the bad times, that you can be a light even when you're hurting. You can be a light even when you're struggling. God can build your temple in the good times and the bad times. And God is calling us. Some of you might feel stuck. You might feel like you're at a point to where your temple, it's, it's you just, you're right there. And it just seems like you've been there forever. I believe that God has a season of breakthrough for you. That as we surrender, as we give it to him, God, listen, I believe that God has plans and visions for you that he still wants to share with you. Whether you're 100 or 10 years old, God still has a plan for your life. So this morning, just as we close, I just want to pray over you. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you saved us. We thank you, Lord God, that your blood changed our lives, Lord. And God, I pray, Father, over each and every one, Lord God, no matter where they're at, Lord Jesus, God, I pray that they will know and they will understand that they are not alone, that you are with them, Lord. And God, I pray, Father, that today, Lord God, as they go, Lord God, let them be challenged, Lord. Let them be challenged. Let them know. Let them not forget. Let them not be distracted. Lord God, let them never forget that they have a purpose, Lord. 
that you have a plan that when they go out, Father, for lunch or they go and do this, Lord, that you have a plan for them. That today, Lord God, you very well might have an appointment for them, Lord Jesus, that they're going to share your light and change a life today. God, let them realize, let us, let our minds once again be about building your kingdom, being the temple that you've called us to be, to carry your presence into this world, Lord Jesus. God, let us remember, let us act, Lord God, upon it, Lord. And God, let us be kingdom builders in this place, Lord Jesus. God, for those, Lord God, who may have been in a slump, Lord God, I pray a new season in their life, Lord Jesus, that once again they realize who you are, who you are in their life, Lord God. And once again, they will begin to build your kingdom. Once again, Lord God, they begin to live with the purpose, Lord Jesus, the purpose that you have called them to, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. God, build this place, Lord, build this place. Build your people in this place, Lord God. God, let us be about you, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Today as you go, I, I encourage you. My heart is that when you leave this place today, that you will walk out of here knowing that God has a plan and purpose for your life. And no matter what the enemy has done to stop it, that even today at this moment, you can leave this place and you can go out into the real world and you can be a light for Jesus. We love you. God bless you this morning.